This is going to be my unbiased review of the Pioneer. It's an AVIC X 940BT. If you guys are just watching this video to show off to your friends and show them how cool your new radio is, I'm not the reviewer for you. My reviews are honest, truthful, and painful in some cases if you don't like what you see. Um, I'm going to tell you like it is anyway. I did a video on the, uh, the Z140BH. Um, and boy, man, that took a whole lot of heat over that video, believe it or not. And I, I guess some people that own this, the system watched my video and didn't like some of the stuff I had to say about it. Well, too bad. Because that's how I roll, man. My videos tell you like I see it. Uh, basically, from my 20 years of experience in selling mobile electronics, that's what I'm doing. I do this for free. There's no need to curse at me. Um, just learn from my reviews. Now, like I said, this is the AVIC X 940BT. This is their second in line to their flagship piece, which is again that Z140BH. This piece here has a smaller screen. It's not the big 7 inch like you'd expect to see on the, the Z series. It's a 6.1 and it has the left navigation with the buttons, which for a lot of guys, I can see that that's a pretty cool tool. I think I like buttons myself. I don't like, I mean, I like the looks of a flat flush screen. It looks really pretty and all. Um, but the price tag difference and some of the functionality suffers so it, for me I mean I think this is gonna be the biggest seller this year especially with the way you know money's been for folks this year and last year I can definitely see this would probably be the one and I'm just letting it go through the demo mode right now just to give you a quick overview of what this thing's gonna tell you what it's gonna do for you but I'm gonna explain to you in layman's terms what all this stuff means and how you can actually make use of all of it so for instance, it's showing you that it does Bluetooth. It does have hands-free Bluetooth built into it. It comes with the CDVM1 microphone, which they've used for years now. It's a fine little microphone. It works good and it actually fits right into most of the factory vents and where uh, stock systems that are non-Bluetooth equipped will actually fit. And I can tell you that because I've installed one of these in a Hyundai Entourage and it fits like a champ. So it's pretty good. This one does link to Facebook, Twitter, you know, accounts like that through an iPhone or an Android app. It has the AHA feature, which could be dangerous for some people. So if you're buying this for your child, watch out because they could be doing a lot of texting and a lot of, you know, social updating while they got their hands on a wheel. And that could be a, a safety hazard. I could see that happening. The nav, which is built in, is made by Navtech, which I'm a big fan of. I like Navtech. I like Google Maps as well. But this system works very well. I think it's a good, good speedy type of process where it moves per, at a good, good speed. Um, and that's probably the highlight of this unit for me personally, the navigation. We talked about the smartphone con connectivity. This works with all the 3 and 4 series iPhones, by the way. Now let's turn this bad boy on. There's your home screen. Destination for your GPS, your phone, which actually mine is already paired because I did a video on how to pair this to um, your phone. If you need help with that, I have a video for that too. Dial pads, nice and big, fairly bright. If you have home set on your phone, which I'm sure you, most people do, one touch of a button, you got it. Your contacts, you hit that, look at that. And ports them all right in there. Look how nice that is. It goes alphabetical. It's very nice. And of course you could do it with these tabs up here. Just like a, a little electronic file cabinet. That's pretty good. You can even delete stuff in your phone book. Which goes back and forth. So it's not just from the phone to the unit. But it's unit to the phone. Which is pretty hot. This is for you had a different phone. And you were pairing a separate phone to the system because you could pair up to more than one you could use that function to do that job the AV source that's gonna bring you up into this main screen and over here it kind of moves like an iPod or an iTouch or a tablet or something like that You just kinda scroll right through it this is the problem that I have with this radio by the way folks is I don't like how fluent this is you could see I'm just trying to make it go it's like okay 
I kind of hit it and it was like a delayed reaction. Uh, 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 and then it made up its mind and it kind of stuck there. Now it's on Pandora. So let's just say if I want to hit FM. Fine. So it made that my primary source and it put AM underneath it. Off. iPod Pandora. And disc up on top. Let's see if I hit iPod what happens. Same thing, it kind of relocates everything for you. It puts the off up there, which before, when I was listening to the FM, it was located here. So that's a little weird. But they're trying to fill all the spots with whatever sources you have. But here's my thing. You have a button here, and you have these tiny little icons right there. That's pretty easy to want to hit this, but actually hit that, and vice versa. Hit one and hit this, and actually hit that. So I think that's the reason why they laid this out all the way to the right. But they made this so large. And they made the sources so small. So for me, I'm not a very big fan of that. But I'll tell you some good things. Because I'm not just going to dog this thing. Because I'm not going to take all that heat like I did with that last one. Now on here, these are some of the functions. You can actually link artist albums, genres right from here. Your EQ is nice because if you wanted to change your settings while you're on the iPod screen with the touch of a button, you can go in there, customize some of them. Go, there's your bass, turn the mid-range up a little, go over to the highs. This works pretty well. I like it. Not the best I've seen from Pioneer, definitely not. But it's, it's decent. It works. You got a free digital 8-band EQ. So, you can't really complain too much about that. It's nice to always give you a back out screen. These are all the presets. Super bass, powerful, natural, vocal, flat. Two customizable settings for user 1 and 2. Again, we'll just go back. That little left arrow will take you into all your music that's on your iPod when you plug it in through an optional iPod cable. You have to buy that optional. I'm using just the standard Dynex. It's an iPod to USB. Same cable you use to charge your iPod or sync it. There is another end on the cable that they supply which has this, which you would use for a 3.5 millimeter. So you would use these two together to get the iPod audio, which I got right now. And the optional cable, which is a CDIU51V, that would add the video. Why they give you half the cable, I don't know. It's always been a thing with me and Pioneer. I never liked that, but it is what it is. Now, on the iPod playback, this is nice. This works really well. I'm very happy with how this functions, how it, how it flows. It's very good. You have your alphabetical choices right there, which is breaking down in text what's going on. So let's just say if I wanted to get to M or something like that. Not bad. The screen, it's, it's fairly responsive. Um, could it be a little better? I'm going to say yes. I'm not, a, I'm not really blown away by the functionality of the screen. I know that they changed all these from LCD to LED. I don't know if that has something to do with it. I don't know what they're using. Um, it looks like they're using the same kind of anti-glare technology like they used to have. Um, I could also say that when you have a DVD on in your vehicle and you have it on for yourself or your children or whoever, um, you do also have to have the brightness set up fairly, fairly high to actually see the screen during the daytime. But, you know, during sunset and night hours, it looks very nice, especially when you put on the parking brake and it reverses the illumination it looks good for the GPS looks good for the audio all the main screens look very nice so let's just say if I wanted to go I'll use Fleetwood Mac well I guess I don't really have a lot of Fleetwood Mac which go figure right well I know I got at least three songs from this group Typical man, uncategorized. And there you go. So I, ch I touched that, but they give you. The
Okay, let me spend some time with the iPod. On the main screen, you have three lines of text. So you have the group, you have the album and the song. Now, on the other Pioneer, I reviewed the 8400. It gave you four lines of text, and that I really liked a lot. This one with three, you know, could it be a little bit better? Sure. But, you know, hey, I guess you get what you pay for. Now, on this one here, you got the three lines. There are some quick icons which you could jump around to. The tools which I just use is just the link genres, artists, and stuff like that. EQ is going to take you into these uh, two custom presets that you can set up. You have an 8 band EQ, and then you also have the factory defaults, which are all laid out in there. Which is nice, an 8 band digital EQ built into the unit. That's a good thing. When you go in back, and you want it to actually find your music, if you got a lot of stuff on there, this unit is good for finding it. When you're scrolling using your finger on the main screen, it's very nice. You see how, well, it is a little touchy. Here, here, and here, I've noticed. Well, that's why we do reviews, right? See, like, I notice, like, say, if I'm using, like, my Motorola Zoom and you're holding something and you move your finger, at least the, the tablet knows that you want to move. You know, it doesn't just, you know, stop and do what you don't want to do. This unit does do that. So I'm going to presume that, that that's just some kind of software thing. Probably something they'll address in the future. It's a new model, you know, cut them a break, nothing's perfect. Now over here you have the tabs where you can just go through alphabetically. So I hit S. Laid out pretty well. And it'll give you a little preview on the right side of what you're listening to. If you touch that, it'll blow it up and give you the three lines. And over here you can change real quick. Like if you remember the last year's model used to go donk, 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 donk. This one doesn't do it. It's more of like a smooth kind of a, a thing they got going on. A new kind of flow. Now this here is a quick link to your app. So if you wanted to use the Pandora, the AHA, of course the Pandora will work through the iPhone or your Android te uh, device. The AHA, you got to be careful, especially for kids like I was saying. I think I said it before. They can get themselves in a world of trouble, you know, updating their, their lives, you know, that they took out the trash this morning and they went to school and now they're having a drink. I mean, you don't want them doing that while they're using their radio. That's not cool, but that's what things are these days. What kid isn't without a computer on his hip every second of the day. Now there's your GPS. I think, let me see how I have this zoomed out right now. Right now I'm set on yeah, half a mile, a one mile. Now this, this unit GPS, I have to say I really do like. And I'll tell you why I like it. Because if you see there's a little button there, a little arrow. When you open it up it gives you these exploded views. One here is a quick reference to your phone. So you wanted to change your... Um, your guidance or the voice or the beeping was getting on your nerves. You could touch and get rid of it real fast. Right over here is your phone contact. So if you wanted to go in there and make a call while you have the GPS running in the background, you can do it. I also like these tabs. When they when they bunch them, they group them together like A, B, C, D, E, 5. You got 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. That's pretty good. Others would be like weird, you know, phone numbers or characters, I guess. Information. POI, point of interest. Some stuff around yourself. Again, very nicely laid out. And you could also select some of these icons. And you could select them, put them on your map so that they're little icons. So if there's things that you usually go to, like uh, banks, amusement parks, you know, whatever your story is, wherever you go at, set them all up. Customize it to how you like it to be. That's good. Um, I just touched that. Excuse me. And again, you could even edit your information. So that's nice. And of course, you can use your hands, move around the screen, you can touch something, you can make edits on your route from here to there, which is a very good feature because back in the days, Pioneer was very limiting. If you were driving a car or a truck and it wasn't allowed in a certain area or a parkway, you could actually go in there, edit it, and do stuff like that. So 
you know, for the GPS, I'm a big fan. I like it. Navtech's always good. Never a disappointment. Um, let's see what else we can talk about with this unit. It does have custom colored illumination. You could probably see it as the video is running. These colors here you can change around. We'll get into some of those settings. Your illumination colors right there. All these colors you could choose as your base color choices. And you could set up a couple memories. So for one for you, one for maybe your uh, your wife or whoever. See, so you can make it green right there. Make it yellow. You know, it's nice. This does have two audio video inputs. You could turn those on and off. Um, so if you don't use iPod video, you can turn it off. So when you're toggling your sources, you won't have a bunch of excess sources on the left uh, scrolling screen that, that are just in your way for no reason. You can actually remove those. It does have a telephone mute input, which is a good thing. Your sound settings, straightforward. Your balance fader, nothing exciting. Your EQ, which is the 8 band, which I went over. Loudness, you could make it for low, mid, and high. It's always been a good feature, I thought, with Pioneer. Subwoofer, you got on and off. You could reverse the phase if you have your woofers inverted or something. You have some kind of weird setup. You could turn your vo your volume up and down. Basically, that's your your bass control volume and your low pass filter or the frequency. The highest she'll go is 125, 50. That's as low as it's gonna go. That's low enough, I'd say. That's subsonic. <laughs> go back. Your sonic control center, which is another setting for your audio which is good so there's a lot of stuff in here SLA what that means is sound level adjustment so when you're in different sources you don't get shocked like when you're watching the TV and the program is you know 20 decibels and you put the commercial on it's like hey it's sale on a penny hose and it's like 40 decibels and it drives you insane this will fix that HPF is your high pass filter so say if you had your subwoofer on 80 hertz, you can put the high pass filter on 80 hertz, so you can put on 100, and you can create a band pass filter, which is a very good tool for guys who are really into their sound. Your Bluetooth settings, I already have my phone here paired to it. It's very easy to pair, it's very painless to do. Your map settings, you could change what you want to see. You could do a close up view when a turn is coming up, you could turn that on, turn it off. Um, you know, there's some other cool stuff. They have a traffic network tuner, which you can purchase and add on to this unit as an option. So if that's something that you might want to be getting, you could do it. Eco meters for the gas conscious, like most of us are. Show your maneuvers, your left, right, what's going on. And at any time with this GPS, by the way, you can always, with a touch of a button, it'll give you a, a choice and it'll show you the row where you got to go because that's... That's always been a downfall for a lot of GPS systems. This has that. It's a good thing. So we got the phone. We did the destination. I showed you some of the GPS. Uh, I think we covered most of the settings. Yeah, I think we're pretty much there. Your disk your slot right is right there. Right up in the top right corner is a micro SD card. I wish it was a full size SD card. Me personally, because I don't personally use micro SD cards it's not like a cell phone you know even those are becoming antiquated these days um, so if you're gonna import media on an SD card you'd have to actually get the adapter put it on a micro and stick it right in there and this unit does have a detachable panel which is only this tiny little portion by the way it's almost impossible to even see it's even gone when it's removed but they did it you know something new I'm just gonna remove my iPod now I'm going to turn this bad boy around and show you what's in the back. Okay, so just in case you're curious what the base looks like when you remove that little panel, that's the piece. It's like a joke, right? This thing is tiny. So the downside is that they don't give you any kind of little case. Because this thing I could definitely see getting lost. And a big thing, and I actually got this as a memo from um, the Pioneer rep, that if you actually have this detachable panel off and you power on your unit and you don't have the password, you are screwed. You will never get this thing back on again. So you know what? When you get your unit, you might actually want to put in a pass passcode. Write it down. If you're going to make use of taking this panel off, make sure you damn well know where that password is. Because if you don't know, man, you are beat. So 
As, there's your warning. They got lots of mounting provisions on the side. They got three sets, so if you have to move the, um, you know, inner outer. Is that even a word, inner outer? You could do that. Now here around the back side, it's pretty robust. This here is the cable for the iPod. They do supply you with this cable. This gigantic plug here will fit in there. Unfortunately, they have it going in the upwards position, which I could see can cause trouble when you're doing an installation, but, you know, it is what it is. I don't like it, but that's how they did it. I'm sure they had a reason. And again, like I was explaining to you, standard USB, and they have the 3.5 bill, so if you wanted to do the video, that's, that's where it goes at. And just for a quick reference, this is the cable I was talking about. Standard iPod to USB. It's the same cable. You don't have to go out and buy a fancy cable or buy Pioneer's for thirty, forty dollars or whatever the heck they are. You can get away with just using a regular roll cable. Now on the back, this here is the preamp video in and out harness. What you got back here is you got your front, your rear, and your subwoofer preamp outputs. They are high voltage, which is a good thing. Rear camera input. There's that telephone mute. This plug here is for the GPS antenna which looks like so. They're still going with the little green plug. Nice little antenna. Antenna input. Audio video inputs right there. GPS we talked about. Preamp output we talked about. That's your 16 pin power and speaker harness. Pretty standard deal. The light green that they give you all that wire for is for the parking brake bypass. That's another video. I'm sure somebody else might beat me to the punch and already have one up there. Right here is this blue plug is for the IP bus, which you can use for external controls. Um, if you're doing satellite radio, you're going to get the. Um, oh, gee, what the heck is it? Oh my god, I just got a brain fart right there. The XM is a GEXP 910 or 920 XM in the series. It'll come to me. Um, wired microphone input, iPod, steering wheel interface. Pretty straightforward. Nothing really too crazy going on back here, but I do like what they're doing. They definitely spent, spent some extra attention and, and did some upgrades on that RCA preamp on us, which has been problematic for, for me personally, installation-wise with Pioneers for noise and stuff. They did good. So again, there's the front of it. I think we should reinstall this little detachable panel. And there it is up close. Nice looking little unit, right? So right now they're going for anywhere from around low sixes to, you know, upper sixes. That's about where they're at. I know the map prices. Significantly higher. I'm sure that's what Pioneers would like to see them be, but that's what they are. It's a lot cheaper than the Z series, almost three, four hundred bucks cheaper. But you know what? It's a winner. It's a nice piece. Um, the other thing is the manual comes on a on a on a ROM or a disc, so you know I can't say anything bad about it. It's about being green. That's a good thing. So they're minimizing some of this paperwork. You know, it's pretty good. They got the one year warranty and. Uh, you know, all in all, I'd say it's a nice little piece, you know. So if you're looking for a good GPS, middle of the road, not, not the cheap entry level, not the top of the line, take a look at the 940BT.